mold it into this track, which is why we went ahead and put it all together. The key to this is to try not to kink chain as, you, as we're unfolding. Uh, it's already been preset into the motor, so we know what direction it should be in as it comes together. And I'm just going to unfold it, and it's already pre-measured. So we'll know when we get here that it's going to make it, it's going to fit. Uh, there should be no adjustment necessary to get it connected. Okay, now that we have the chain all extended, uh, it's time to connect it to the opposite end or the non-contact So what we're going to do is, what's important is that we take the end of the chain and we run it through the hole in our limit stop. Uh, and you can see now I have it through there. This can slide along. If it doesn't, you can simply loosen the screw here and let it go past. So now what's important is uh, this is going to be tight and I've started to loosen it and I'm going to continue to go ahead and get this piece off. Uh, this is hardened steel and we're going to connect the two together and then reconnect it here on the end piece. So uh, you'll see the hole, the rectangular hole. All we're going to do is turn this chain at 90 degrees like so. I'm going to place it inside and then I'm going to flip it back and you can see that one half of a link is now connected to that. So in order to connect it back to the end piece, I'm just simply going to line those two up and uh, grab my wrench and then begin to tighten, get it, get it into the hole that it came out of. And now I'm just tightening that up. And, uh, and it's now connected and uh, it's important, you'll see there's a, a slot here in the end piece and on the slot is an arrow. So what we want to do is tighten to where you can, where you can see the end of the wrench um, in the, uh, up to the arrow. That's important. So when I see the end of my wrench get to this arrow, that's when you know that's where you stop. Okay? Uh, on a very, really long uh, uh, operator, say over 15 feet, you might want to take it just a tad farther just to make the chain tighter and it doesn't hang down in the, when it's hung upside down. So here I go, I'm tightening it now and I'm just going to keep it going until I get to the end of the wrench. And we're almost there. I am using a uh, 3 8 wrench or a 3 8 socket. And I see, I can see the end of my wrench now. In a couple turns, it gets to the exact arrow. And I stop, and now we're, uh, we're ready to go. This, is, this drive track is now ready to hang. start with the end bracket. The end bracket is important. It's recognizable by a four inch piece on the top. And the reason that's important is all the pressure uh, from the door, the pressure it takes to open the door is put on this particular bracket. And on twin doors, the end piece is always in the middle. And we'll have two of these uh, when we're done. One for each side of the door, of the twin door. So now, now that we've, we've attached that, you can see the wood uh, legs we put in. Uh, you'll see it has an angle on it. And also, more importantly, this sway brace. The reason that's important is I cannot move this uh, left to right at all. And that's good because all the pressure is going to be on here. our door arm uh, on the upper left and upper right corners of each door and that's typical when you see the triangle shape you'll it will make sense to you which one goes where you'll see this curve uh, at the end of the door arm and that indicates it goes in this case to the right 
whichever way the curve is facing is the direction uh, you'll use it. And then the one on the left will be just the opposite of that. It allows us to have a gap here so that if there's a lot of pressure, they'll never touch. Okay? Uh, this is a uh, metal uh, door, so we use metal screws. If you had a wood door, we would provide wood screws for you. But um, what's important about having this on first is that that sets the distance from the inside face of the door uh, into the room because everything is always installed on the inside of the, of the building. Uh, that sets the, space, the spacing for our drive track. So right now we have a window of about five inches in which to hang our operator. So you can be off up to that much uh, when you hang it. We place it in the center here. Uh, in your hardware bag, you'll get this C, C clamp um, that we're going to hang the track from, and I'll put a pin through it. Now that we have that up and we have our door on, we simply match this last five inches and line it up with our C, our C clamp, our C channel here uh, to attach the door. So now the spacing is already pre, prefigured, if you will. So uh, now that we have the door installed uh, and the clamp, the punch angles here, the sway brace has been attached. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and hang the drive track. This is a, the most critical part of it, but not difficult to do. So if, you'll, if you can see, we're going to lift this up. Sometimes we rest it on the arm, but I need to line up the holes on this bracket uh, inside of this clamp. And I simply push this through. It's got uh, two clips on either end. Of course, I left one off for now. And let me just push it through. And then I'll take the other side and put the other clip. These are interesting clips because they're 3D and it allows me to grab it with my finger and not lose it uh, with a pair of pliers. So I simply place it on the other side and now, we, now we're hanging the track, the drive track, and we're going to continue this on with our, our brackets on this track and hang them to the rest of the punch angle which are spaced roughly at seven feet apart. Okay, now it's time to, to hang this track all the way through the opening. So I have, we put these on earlier, as you recall, and uh, they're slidable, so I'm not exactly where I want to be, so I'm just going to slide it into place. We actually put, put the third one on first so that we can suspend the track. Uh, that just makes it easier to hang. And then we can fill in the blank. So we provide these screws uh, with a whiz nut 
and we, we place it through the proper hole in the punch angle, uh, put it on, screw it down, tighten it down, and do the other side, and uh, that's done. That's about all it takes. We just need to make sure you tighten them nice and tight. We've released the, uh, the cable on the motor so that we can slide it freely in the track. And now it's time to take uh, our motor and connect it to the door, which we do with the door arm. So uh, right now, what I'm going to do, it's already been preset. So I'm going to take the screw out of this and put it aside for a second. And then on here, we've already placed our our bolt with our special clip in it. I'm going to pop it out. I'm going to grab the JR from the, hard, the hardware box. And I'm going to place it in like this with the curve right next to the motor. And it needs to go in between the slots here. So I take my pin and I find the hole in the middle. I pop it through and place the clip on the back end on the other side. It doesn't matter which direction it goes. It could be front or back. So now the J-arm is attached to the motor, and now I need to attach it to the, the door arm. So I just kind of line that up, uh, grab my bolt and nut, and uh, we're going to attach it now to the door. And once this is done and tight, now the door and the motor are now connected. As you can see, I can now move the door, and the motor is going to run with the door uh, once we get started. Also, I'll want to un undo our rope here so that we can grab this. This is probably a 17-foot door, and uh, we need to be able to grab it from the ground. So this will always be out of the way, however, when you operate the door. So I tighten up the, the JR. It's all connected. Now the next thing is to uh, set our limits. And inside here, if you remember the black piece from earlier, uh, it can, it can, you might have to loosen the screw, but it can slide. And this is how we set our limits. One of the most important things you have to do is set the limits prior to ever operating the door. Let me say that again. You have to set the limits prior to ever operating the door. Uh, and I'll get into that later once we get this uh, to the next section. But uh, the way that works is, right now our door is placed in the middle, and I'm going to slide my limit, and it'll go right into the motor. And when it does, you'll hear a click. Wherever that click is, is where it's going to stop. And I simply, uh, once I hear the click, I go just a tad past it, and then I'm going to take a number three Phillips, and just tighten the screw up into the track. Now it's tight and uh, it's where it clicks so I know this is where the door is going to stop when we operate the door. We're going to repeat this process at the back end. So I know right now in the front end with closing it'll stop where it needs to. Now we'll have to go to the other side and set the limit at the back end when we open the door all the way. We'll do the same process uh, at the other end. Okay, now it's time to mount our control head, and this is an uh, all-important part. It has all the brains in it, and uh, we need to install it five feet off the ground. And the reason for that uh, is to keep small children from activating the doors when you don't want them to. So uh, that's what we do, and you'll see how pretty easy it is to install. Uh, one thing we want to make sure is there's only one connection. There's really no wiring to this system. Uh, there's one connection here at the top, and we just need to hold that up as you pre-drill the holes uh, inside. We do that uh, 
allow the screw to go in easy and not crack the wood. And uh, just make it simple for it to get the screws to go in. So now that this is hanging, we can, uh, the next step would be to uh, set our photo cells, our reflective photo eyes, and uh, it's just easier to handle once it's mounted. So we always want to mount it first before we clip any wires to it. What we want to do is measure vertically, and in this case we're going to put the uh, transmitter receiver at 9 inches off, off the ground uh, and onto the jam. And since we are already here, we're going to go ahead and put the reflector for the other side at, uh, at 12 inches. Or is that, yeah, 12 or 14 inches it looks like. And, uh, then we'll be ready and we can do both of those on the other side at the same time. Okay, now that we have the bracket mounted, we're going to uh, place the transmitter on. And the screws for that come in a separate bag. And uh, simply uh, push them in. Uh, that bracket is designed to be able to manipulate that uh, up and down uh, to help you uh, align it with the reflector on the opposite side. And you uh, put the screws in on the back. And we'll square that up, you know, and uh, what we'll do is a, we'll turn the uh, control head on and put some power to it, and then we'll line the reflector up at the opposite end. And when, that, when this lights up on this side, we, we know we have a, a good connection. Okay, now it's time to uh, place our center on the doors. What this does is uh, it sucks the door in at the in the close cycle, and the beauty of it is it allows the uh, operator to not have to touch the door. Uh, previously, they would have had some uh, overthrow latches that they grab the door with and pull it over the center, and that would suck the door into the jam. Now, with an operator on it, you don't want to have to touch the door, or we don't want you to. We want you to be able to hit the button and walk away. So the sensor mechanism be, uh, is two basic parts. The first part is our uh, bracket with the roller on the roller guide on the bottom and uh, this is what uh, will roll through a channel that's placed on the door looks like this and it uh, has multiple holes along it okay and uh, I'm going to show you how we installed this um, so you'll know how to do it. So what's important about that is I take this is an 18-inch angle, and it's placed out to the front edge of the face of the door on on the on a girt, and we'll always want it to be flush right here. The reason it needs to be flush is so that it doesn't hit anything while it's traveling, and it also creates a pivot for us. So um, put a screw in here in the outermost hole and flush with the the uh, face of the door. Um, the bracket is going to be placed uh, squarely on the door about a quarter inch off the bottom, top of this plate and placed halfway into the, the width of the girt. 
In this case, it looks like we have three and a half, four inches. So we have plenty of room in which to place this. Now that I have a pivot here, and I have this set halfway into the girt, I now use, I can use the existing uh, overthrow latch and suck this in, and now I can just simply push this over, and I kind of have a pretty good bearing as to where I want to set this L bracket. So I'll simply uh, grab a, the proper screws that we provide, and we'll screw those into the holes below, and that will make this very stiff and strong. And then you'll notice when the door is at the last few inches of closing, it'll just suck the back end uh, of the door. Okay? Okay, once you have your photo eyes set up and you have everything connected, when you first turn this on, you're going to see the light blinking. Uh, the light blinking means that this is in the learn cycle. It usually takes three to four full runs to get through the learn cycle. And it's important to do that. It's very important to not forget that you need to have the limits set before you begin this process. So you manually set the limits, like we talked about earlier. Uh, because the learn cycle doesn't know when to start and when to stop. But with the limit set, it will. So what we're going to do now, we know it's blinking right now, and we'll, we're going to operate the door. I'll just press it here, and you'll uh, see that the door's moving. And again, we need to get three full runs, sometimes four. And uh, when that gets done, you'll know you're done when the light stops blinking. And now the operator will act normally like you would expect it to do. But what it's doing now is learning all the pressures uh, during the cycle of the door. And uh, it'll remember that the next door run, the next time it runs, it'll know it needs to gear up a little higher because I hit a rough spot. Uh, and that's important because it uh, helps, helps for a smooth operation. Okay, so I got one full cycle in here now. I'll just push it again until I get uh, three to four cycles done and the light stops blinking. Okay, now it's time to program our remotes. And uh, each remote has four buttons. You can pull this out and see the buttons. And uh, farmer would like to have the top button operate both doors at the same time, which we can do. The way we do that is uh, I have to have every remote we're going to use, and I'm going to program them separately, the top button, so that they're the same no matter where they're at. Uh, the way that happens is that uh, I take the cover off, it just clips right in here, we pop it off, and over here on the right side is going to be the radio button. And it's not visible, it's just inside this little hole, it's a little blue button. You hold it down, you see a little light show up for a couple seconds, and you let it go, and now it's time to press the top button. And it's blinking, and when it stops blinking, it should be programmed. I, I always check them, however, and I'll push that first button. And now you can see it's moving the door, so it's, it's officially programmed. I'm going to stop it. I know it's programmed, because once it operates, I know it's done. So I will grab, I want to now program this, say the third button down, and that is if he only wants to open one door at a time. So I'm going to do the third button down as the left door or the east door or west, whatever one this is. And uh, we'll do that now. So I go in, I push it down, I hold it, let it go, push the third button down starts blinking inside there, when it stops blinking, it should be programmed. So I'll check it, push the button again, and I see that it's closing the door. So I'll do this with all, in this case he has three remotes, so I'm going to do this with all three doors. All three remotes.
Okay, now we're over at the other door, and because uh, we're going to open both doors with one button, uh, I need to program the same button I pushed on the other side on this side. So that was button number one out of four. So uh, I'll just repeat what I did on the other side. Take the cap off. I'm going to push and hold the button down for about three seconds. And then I'm going to push the top button again until the light stops blinking inside. Now that happened, so I'm going to test it to see if the door is moving, and yes it is. So I know it's programmed, and then I just stop it. And I'll continue this. Also, the farmer wanted each door separately, so we're going to pick the fourth button down and program it separately. So I'll go ahead and repeat and push the button down for a count of three, let it go, hit the fourth button, and it's blinking, uh, just stop, I let it up, push again to check to see if it learned it, and it did. And I'll repeat this process for the other two remotes we have on this job. And then everything will be programmed the same. Okay, now it's time to uh, wrap this up, but we want to guide the doors at the bottom so that it doesn't bl uh, blow out in the wind. And when, when there's a concrete apron, we're able to use our floor guides. And that's what you're looking at now. And uh, we use uh, red heads to put them in. They're about five inches long, I believe. Half inch by five inch. And uh, he's going to go ahead and install the last bolt in this first one. And the way we figure this is we always come pretty quickly. We come three feet off of the jam, which is the one we're putting in now. And then roughly every six feet to seven feet, depending on the length and width of the door. It's important to note that this is designed to be placed against the C-channel on the bottom of the door. And uh, we're going to operate it now to show you uh, what that looks like. You can see that's about three feet from the door. And now we're going to, oh, I'm standing in front of the eye. Uh, and now we're going to just watch it go by. You can see how it would guide the door. And we'll, we'll see how it pushed it right where we wanted it. And now we'll continue on to the next one until we get to the center guide. The objective, of course, is it's got to hit the center guide to close so that we don't have to, it doesn't think it hits something. So uh, we will calculate that as we go, but it's pretty simple. Once you do the first one, the rest kind of fall in place. And we'll set that last one so that it hits the center guide every time.
operators come with two safety features. Uh, the photo eyes would make up one feature, but it's all, there's also another one called object detection. So if the door were to hit something, whether you trip the eyes or not, this door is going to hit it with about five pounds of pressure or less in reverse, much like your garage door at home. So let's, I'd like to demonstrate that now. So this only works during the closed cycle. So what I do to show it is I simply just put my foot up and lift it. I let it hit my foot. You'll see it barely touches it. It's a big door and it just reverses. Pretty much. <laughs>